Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave to your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir, through God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Did you receive any good presents this Christmas? I've already heard about several. I received three particularly notable gifts this year. 
Two were pretty good, and one was really pretty bad, when I'm honest. The first good present was an email on Christmas Day from a person who read the article about Calvary the day before, and he'll, I'll quote him here. I love getting emails like this. Reverend Jensen, call me Jonathan, please, or Father Jensen. Reverend Jensen, I read in the Wall Street Journal today with great joy and interest about your church's efforts to assist the members of the Tree of Life congregation during their time of need. Your congregation's kindness, mutual respect, and willingness to help others is inspirational. Sadly, there is not enough of that in the world, or so it seems. I made a contribution online to your church today. I am a 60-year-old Jewish man in the Philly area, and so happy to see how your congregations have worked together. The stories of both of you celebrating your mutual respective holidays was just awesome. Thank you for being such good people. I love receiving things like that. This is confirmation from the wider community that we are engaged in our mission. A uh, second present was much more personal and simple, and it was a 1979 poster I found on eBay. It's my wife's present to me that I picked out and bought. It's one of those things. <laughs> It's the same Pittsburgh Steelers collage poster I had on my wall as a 10-year-old boy, now long gone. It, on it, it shows Terry Bradshaw passing to Lynn Swan, obviously beating the Cowboys. And the poster hangs on my computer, by, on the wall by my computer at home, prompting happy feelings past and present. Now, of course, I was not there, but feel connected to my childhood and the shared experience through that visual representation of that time. Now, the very bad present was received on December 23rd. That day, remember, when the, wester, the weather changed dramatically from about 40 degrees to below zero in a matter of hours, and went from rain and snow and sleet to ice and gusty winds. And apparently, the rain and snow and cold made the top of a tree freeze, then the wind and weight caused it to snap off, and a 30-foot or more branch fell, bounced off my car, and landed and blocked the driveway. The roof and side were smashed. The car is totaled. Merry Christmas as I walked out to preach for services the next day. Now, that's a good summary because the season of Christmas is usually a bundle of expectations and emotions and experiences. It's a lot of good and bad mixed together, and it feels very compressed. But effectively, it is just like it always is. It's a microcosm of life, just a lot of it at once together. In the midst of things just like this, this good and bad mixed world, we are given a message of hope just when we need it a sign that God knows us by name, God loves us without end, and calls us to new and abundant life. What is more hopeful than the birth of a child? At Christmas, we are not celebrating Jesus' birthday as cute or as inviting as that may sound. We are celebrating the gift of the incarnation. Incarnation asserts that God is transcendent, mighty, and powerful, and out there, but God is also present, indwelling, abiding with us. We celebrate that God chose to enter into the human condition as Jesus, as one of us, to love us, to reconcile us, to show us a better way to live with all the good and bad mixed together that we experience. A true gift of Christmas is to recognize God's presence no matter what circumstances life may throw in our direction. Now, I've heard from many of you that finding God in the good experiences is something that we do more or less reasonably well. I've been told by a few people I want to split the credit with Jesus sometimes when good things happen, but mostly I can recognize when God is there. But what about when things go wrong or even off the rails? Where is God then? Many of the difficulties in life that we encounter could be called first world problems if we take 
the time to reflect. Your beloved team loses when you finally get to go to a game. While annoying or consuming or exhausting, some things are simply a problem that can be solved or something broken that can be fixed in time. A car, for example, is just a thing and can be replaced. Your power going out or losing a job or a strained relationship or perhaps a family fight over the holidays, even finding no room at the end like Mary and Joseph, are broken things that can be mended with enough time and effort. But what do we do when we face problems that can't be fixed no matter how hard we try, some things that are simply too big for us, a burden, too much to bear? When life seems like too much to bear, how do we know that God is still there or that we are on the right track? We need reminders, point us to help us along the way. And that is what this gospel, particularly the last line, helps to reveal. Now this reading is simply the concluding part of the Christmas Eve story, that beautiful one we love to retell. We all know it by heart, most likely, Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem to be counted, to be registered when Quirinius was governor. Jesus was born in a stable because there was no room at the inn. Angels announced to shepherds that the Messiah had been born and gave directions how to find him. The angels departed. The shepherds decided to go to Bethlehem and share the news they had experienced with Mary and Joseph. The shepherds told them all they'd heard. And our gospel today adds one more line to that story. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given to him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, there's a lot going on, and let me emphasize just a few things to unpack it a bit. Mary and Joseph, Jesus' parents, were following the commandments, what it said in the scriptures to do. The gospel writer wants us to know there is continuity between the Old and New Testaments. This is one continuous story. For them, circumcision was the human response, a sign of faithfulness to the covenant established between God and the people. This was what they were supposed to do. And just after this, in the next section, Jesus is presented in the temple with appropriate offerings. That's also what they were supposed to do. But this verse also reveals the power of a name that we might miss. The angel, the representative ambassador from God, told Mary to name the child Jesus. And the name in Hebrew is Yeshua or Joshua, mostly for us. Yah for Yahweh and Hashua for salvation. His very neat name means God is salvation. That's the feast we celebrate today, the holy name of Jesus, or God is our salvation. While interesting, maybe, what does this have to do with how we recognize and find peace in God at all times and in all places? Notably, when life throws at us things that we can't readily fix, like suffering, or death, or evil, or injustice, or all the rest. In the midst of their arduous and long journey, Mary and Joseph had this beautiful and holy moment in the stable. Jesus, their child, was born. God had entered the world in a new way as a human being, and shepherds went and confirmed what the the angel told Mary. And then what? Then Mary and Joseph had to get on with life, going back to all the things they had known before, just like we do after Christmas and the new year. First, they name the child into circumcision and then back to work. Good, bad, and different, that is precisely where Jesus always arrives, right where we are. There are two tools that can help us recognize God working through both good and bad times. The first I call confirmation through community. That's one reason we need the church, people trying to be faithful to the same God, the same values, together in our way of being in the world. At the most basic level, when something unexpected occurs, good or bad, what do we do? We turn and look at each other, 
for confirmation, to share the experience. Did he just make that play? Did you hear what she just said? Did you see that too? We recognize significant events together. It's part of the reason so many people gathered last night for New Year's Eve. Moments are often more meaningful when shared together. What's the first thing Mary did after the angel Gabriel told her she would bear a son and name him Jesus? She went with haste to her cousin Elizabeth's house. By the way, everybody in the Bible has a sense of urgency. They're going with haste everywhere. It's, not like it's, it's like it's not real until she told someone who believed her to help Mary understand what had happened and what this meant. Mary and Joseph must have had a similar conversation. For the shepherds, after hearing from the angel, they talked to one another and said, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that is taking place. Can you believe it? They went also with haste and told Mary what had happened. The prophets Simeon and Anna later confirm who Jesus is. There is an obvious pattern when we look for it. We receive confirmation through community, through one another. That is, other people help us to recognize God's presence even when we can't. Other people can become the hands and feet of God when we need it, and we can to them as well. And this could come, as it does in this church, with a cup of soup or flowers from the altar or an email from a Jewish guy on Christmas Day. Listening, praying, teaching, taking someone to the doctor or in a million other ways help us recognize Jesus and his presence with us. There is an obvious pattern to this if we look for it and we need each other to point to God. The second tool is an extension of confirmation through community over time and space. Mary and Joseph followed the tradition of their ancestors to name Jesus, to go through with the circumcision. This rituals of faith, things we call sacramental, like when we sing hymns, study the scriptures, offer prayers, and share the Eucharist, they bond us to our ancestors, even when we cannot explain it all. Like a poster or photograph, they point us to the shared experience and offer a connection with community, even when not physically present. They elicit memories by doing this together. We participate with others through time and space to recognize Jesus is here. On this day, this new year, this holy name, this Christmas season, we are given a message of hope. A sign that God knows us each by name, loves us without end, and calls us to new and abundant life through the birth of the holy into our midst. Good, bad, or indifferent, that is precisely where Jesus arrives. Will you help us to recognize it together? Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. We have spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer prayers to God, who sends new life into every year, saying, Hear our prayer. For the Church, for the Anglican Communion, and for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. For the Episcopal Church, and for Michael, our presiding bishop. For the Diocese of Pittsburgh, and for Ketlin, our bishop. For Calvary Church, and for our clergy, particularly Jonathan, Neil, Cameron, and Jeffrey. Give us grace to proclaim the good news of your coming into the world. O oh God of new life, for all the people of the earth, for the people of Ukraine, Ethiopia, Yemen, Afghanistan, Somalia, and all those touched by war, violence, poverty, and oppression. For refugees and immigrants, for all who are homeless, cold, and hungry. For those who serve our country, particularly Christine, Trace, Robert, John, Chris, George, and Brian. For troops deployed in Eastern Europe, for their families, and for the safe return of those far from home. Plant the love of your heart of your name in every heart, O oh God of new life. For those who look to you for strength, for all who travel in this holiday season, for people suffering from COVID and for their loved ones, for Erica, Elise, Diane, Bob, Ruth, Henry, Margaret, Stephen, Paula, Phyllis, Jamie, Mary Ann, Paul, Doreen, Martha, Larry, Justin, James, Carol, Haiti, Richard, Charles, Rebecca, Martha, Mary, Kiran, Phyllis, Joan, Dick, Sarah, Jeffrey, Bob, Jan, Stan, Diane, Heidi, Shirley, Charles, Jeremiah, Dave, Debbie, Caroline, and all those who have been committed to our prayers for the people throughout the world living with HIV and AIDS, for those struggling with addiction and those in recovery, for strength of caregivers and healthcare workers, for those who we now name. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace, O God of new life, For those who have died, for John Glasher and Pope Benedict, for those in whose memory altar flowers are given today, George S. Ebert, Jr., for the victims of gun violence, for those who mourn, and for those whom we now remember. As you came to dwell among us on earth, now let them live with you in eternal, in eternal glory. O God of new life, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, welcome to Calvary Episcopal Church. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, Happy Feast of the Holy Name. Um, Next Sunday, we will have an adult forum led by our environmental stewardship uh, ministry at Calvary. It's an interactive theological reflection. We invite everyone to that 10 a.m. next Sunday in the choir room. Uh, The following Sunday, January 15th, the priest and rabbi walk into a classroom or resume, uh, continuing to be focused on the parables. And also next week, the young adults and parents class with breakfast to entice you will meet at 10 a.m. to discuss the gospel passage of the day. Uh, Brief pastoral update, you note that Neil Rahman, our senior associate rector, is not here. Neil's mother in Florida has entered into hospice Uh, He has gone down with her. Please do keep him and whole family in your prayers. I'll I'll say this from personal experience. He loves to hear from you, but having to say a hundred times, how's your mom, and respond to that is a little uh, difficult. He will write something and be able to come back and share with you at some point in the future. Uh, He's now in Florida with her and father and sister. Uh, Upcoming on Saturday, January 28th, it's Chili Fest. That is a social time, assuming it's not 65 degrees like a couple days ago. It's supposed to be cold in January. Uh, We will gather together to have fun, to eat warm chili, and on that day we will also celebrate the ministry of James Knight with us, who's been our sexton for 41 years. You'll see a note in the bulletin about how to contribute to a purse, a financial gift, for James on his retirement. And finally, we invite you to come up after the service and take any of the flowers up here, the poinsettias, not the Lady Chapel, but everything else. There are 168 different flowers for you to take. So this is, I'm encouraging you because they're just going to sit here and they are quite beautiful for a while. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary, Joseph, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.